everyone, I hope you're really well. Welcome, or indeed, welcome back to the channel. If you are new, don't forget to hit subscribe because today I am testing something so exciting. So, as you can probably guess, we have a naked face situation, which means I'm testing a foundation. The foundation that I've chosen to test today I feel like has been doing the rounds quite a lot on YouTube at the moment. There are some really big YouTubers that have tried it, but it was one of these products that I was so intrigued by. It's been around for a very long time. It feels like it's kind of having a bit of a renaissance at the moment, so I couldn't wait to get my hands on it. So without further ado, the product that I'm talking about is Dermacol Makeup Cover Foundation. And yes, I picked up two because I really struggled to try and figure out what shade I was probably going to be. If you've never heard of this foundation before, and admittedly I hadn't until it started showing up on YouTube quite a bit, let's have a quick look on the Dermacol website so we can read a little bit more about this foundation. This is the official dermacolcosmetics.com website and you can see they're describing it as their legendary high covering makeup. It benefits from being waterproof, hypoallergenic, it's suitable for all skin types, it's got a really decent SPF of 30 as well, it's preservative free and this is a new one for me, I've never seen the foundation described as being full or extreme coverage. It was created as the first of its kind in Europe and one of the first in the world. The license for this foundation was eventually sold to Hollywood. It contains 50% pigments which makes it a weapon against skin imperfections. Okay. Dermacol makeup cover provides perfect coverage even in thin layers and is the perfect corrector for dark under eye unpleasant spots and skin blemishes. It completely covers acne, loss of pigmentation, post-surgical bruising, tattoos, etc. It may be used on the entire face or body for colour correction, darkening or lightening the skin tone and ensuring an ideal balance. It's widely used as a professional makeup for photo or film shoots, modelling and for festive occasions and you get 30 grams of product. There is an okay shade range going from pretty pale through to a whole host of kind of mid and tan shades and then this would appear to be the deepest colour. I don't honestly think the swatches on the website are all that good. I had to do a huge amount of research in terms of which shade I would probably need to get. So it is something that you will need to look into quite a bit to try and find a match. So in terms of the results I can expect, it should provide outstanding coverage but with a natural looking finish for your entire face and body. My skin will be well balanced and have a velvety matte appearance. And then to use it, you simply find the right colour for your skin, gently tap the makeup onto your skin with either your fingers or with a dampened makeup sponge. Apply the Dermacol makeup cover gradually by first using a small quantity and then add as needed until all skin problems are covered. The makeup cover has a rich consistency and provides extreme coverage, therefore it is important to apply the makeup evenly. So, I am not at all scared there at all. Okay, so the way I am feeling right now is I'm feeling kind of an equal mix of pure ball of excitement and absolutely terrified and that is in completely equal measure because I feel like things are going to go wrong very, very quickly so I'm going to have to have a very light hand with using this. The shades that I picked up are 208 and 210. This packaging I think is their 50th anniversary packaging so we're not talking about anything new here. This stuff has been around for such a long time and if it's good enough for Hollywood then I definitely want to try me some of that. I can't believe how affordable this stuff is. I picked it up from a website I'd never heard of before called Notino, I think is how you say it, and I will definitely be using them again to make purchases because it was really quick and they had an absolutely amazing selection of products as well as really good prices as well because I think I picked up each of these for just over £7. So this is what the packaging looks like. It's very weighty. You are getting 30 grams, so it's on a par with most other foundations, but it's obviously in a much smaller tube. This is obviously because it's very highly pigmented, you don't need very much. 
but it's, it is quite weighty. I have swatched these already, so I'll just show you if you're intrigued about getting this for yourself and don't know what colour to go for. It's really hard to get out of the packaging as well. It does have that look about it that kind of says old school makeup somehow, which is exciting. You get a shelf life of 24 months on here as well, so that's really good. So here are the two different shades. So the lighter one is 208, the darker one is 210. Right, should we get some of this on my face? I am really not sure which shade I'm gonna go for. I think I'm gonna put both of them on my face because I've got a fair bit on my fingers here just to see how they look. That's 210 and that's 208. Why do I get the feeling if I use 210 it's gonna be way too dark once I've finished the rest of my face? I think that's probably the one that's suiting me the most, so I'm gonna go with 210. If you are new to my foundation test videos, I tend to use a dampened sponge to apply foundation on one side of my face, and I've also got my Zoeva 104 buffer brush here as well, which I also like to use to apply foundation. I am aware of the fact that on their website they did say to either use a sponge or fingers, so I think I'm just gonna see how things go as it's applied. My skin is freshly washed and moisturised but I've not primed it at all and I'm not planning on using setting powder either. Because this foundation claims to dry down to a kind of velvety matte finish, I just want to see how it performs on its own before I start experimenting too much with other products. I think I'm going to do this side of my face first and I'll use the sponge. It's a really weird texture. It's quite greasy feeling. I do have quite a few things that need covering up at the moment. I've got a few spots on my chin area. It does seem to be going on really nicely. I like the fact that they say that you can use this for your under eye area as well. I'm just gonna put some straight on the sponge. This is probably going to be far too much, but live dangerously. It's weird, I can't imagine this drying down to a velvety matte finish because it does feel really greasy. It's got a real slippery texture to it, which I wasn't really imagining. I was imagining it to be really stiff and quite difficult to work with. Okay, so I think that's half of my face done and I'm pretty happy with the level of coverage that I've got. As you can see, hopefully, it is looking really shiny at the moment. I'm hoping that it's going to dry down a little bit more, but coverage-wise, yeah, I hardly needed anything at all, and it does seem to have done a really good job of covering up a lot of the issues that I've got. It doesn't seem to accentuate dryness at the moment either, so that's really good, because I do tend to suffer with a lot of dryness around this area, even though I'm oily elsewhere. Right, so let's do the other side of my face with a brush now see how well it covers this healing spot. It does seem to be making the brush pull a little bit when trying to blend this in. I don't know how the finish is going to be with a brush but I think I prefer how it was feeling with a sponge for actual application. Okay, I think that's this side of the face done. I'm just gonna see, using my little concealer brush, whether I can just dot some in here, just to see if we can make that look a little bit better, because I don't feel like I need much coverage elsewhere. <sighs> okay, I'm impressed. It's a bit like having an airbrush foundation in so much as with a light hand and the right tool you can truly make something disappear because this healing spot which was really horrible at the time that I had it, it was one that never really came to anything and it's taken a long time to heal. You'll probably see it in lots of videos of mine, it's always there just reminding me. But I feel like it's covered that really quite nicely, I mean obviously the fact that it's raised there's not much I can do about that. But in terms of the fact that it was very dark and very noticeable, it's covered that really nicely. Should we try and deal with the under eye situation? Because I feel like in the viewfinder, it's not looking as bad as it is, but in real life? Because I've got sort of both colors on the back of my hand, I think I might mix them together because I do want to go a little bit lighter there. We'll just see how it deals with the under eye area. It's amazing how far this product goes, you really don't need very much. Uh, 
And I'm just going to use up the last of what I've got on the couple of these spots that I've got down here. It still feels really greasy, which I just wasn't expecting. It kind of feels like I'm putting on makeup for theatre or television or something in so much as it doesn't really matter how you look up close or how natural it looks, it's just how it looks from a distance. Okay, so that is everything done. I feel like I am super oily looking, which I am very nervous about. I think the colour match is okay. I think the camera is washing me out a little bit. And if you want to compare my hands where I've had it on one hand, this is the hand which has had it on the back of, and this is what my skin looks like normally. So it does offer amazing coverage. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish the rest of my makeup, I'm going to cross everything that this dries down a little bit more and stops looking so greasy, considering it's supposed to be a velvet matte finish, and I will be right back in a second just to show you how things are looking. Okay, so that is the rest of my makeup done. Okay, so I had to do two things when I was applying the rest of my makeup. I wasn't happy with how it was sitting because I went into my bedroom to finish off the rest of my makeup and where I do my makeup is right in the window so I'm using as much natural light as possible and I just felt like things were looking a little bit heavy and greasy. Now whether that's because I'm using a teeny tiny mirror to try and apply makeup instead of having something a bit bigger I don't know but when I looked at things in my bigger mirror, I thought, hmm, okay, if I'm going to go out into the world and look presentable, I'm going to have to do something about this. So what I did is I just rebuffed over my entire face with my Zoeva 104. And one thing I noticed when I was doing that is it did make the foundation kind of streak. It was leaving like brush stroke marks. So that's possibly why they're not saying to use a brush with this particular foundation and instead use fingers or sponge. And I kind of felt like that at the time. I felt like it was going on a bit better with a sponge. But for this particular one, because of the texture of it, because of the fact that it is quite greasy, I think I'd actually prefer to just use fingers to massage it into the skin. What I did do is I left what was on the back of my hand there just to see if it did actually dry down because what I've had to do is, I know I said I wasn't going to powder, but I needed a powder. I was kind of in that situation where before I did my eyebrows, I thought I feel quite greasy. If I don't put some powder on my eyebrows, then I feel like they're just gonna slip off my face at some point. So I have used my loose powder on top of this, which is my NARS Translucent Crystal Setting Powder. Why it was feeling so greasy, I'm not sure. On the back of my hand, it has actually dried down quite a lot and it doesn't feel greasy. It's got quite a dewy finish to it, which I wasn't really expecting. So I just wanted to mattify things a little bit. So I have lightly powdered my face as well. In terms of how it's looking, I think it's actually looking really quite nice. Now that I've gone over the top of it a little bit and blended it out because I think I did use too much, even though it felt like I hadn't used very much at all. So if you're interested in trying this foundation, you really, really have to use the tiniest, babiest amount of this stuff and just spread it as far as it will go. And then once you've done that and you feel like you need a bit more coverage, then just really lightly build it up because it's easy to underestimate this foundation and end up putting too much on. My skin is still looking kind of slightly dewy and luminous, but it's to a point now that I'm kind of happy with it. It's not looking greasy at all. I will be interested to see how this looks a little bit later on, but obviously I'll be conscious of the fact that I did actually have to powder. It would have dried down to a more matte finish, but it wouldn't have looked matte. I think it still would have had that kind of luminosity to it. So I just wanted to take some of that away. One thing I did notice is it continually creased under my eyes. And I tend to suffer with that problem with pretty much every concealer I ever use. So I am kind of used to it. If it gives me the right level of coverage, I don't really mind just blending under my eyes throughout the day because I am used to it. And at the end of the day, I'd rather something kind of hydrate my fine lines and stop accentuating them than dry them out and making them look a lot worse. So I think I'll need to experiment a little bit more using it under my eyes before I truly pass judgement on that. It feels very lightweight, it doesn't really feel like I'm wearing anything and I think it's covered everything really beautifully. I'll just quickly zoom you in so you can see how things are looking close up. Okay, so hopefully this is giving you a good idea of how things are actually looking. And if it's looking like there's not much going on and everything's looking pretty good, that's because that is how it's looking. 
I mean, you can see that this is peeking through a little bit more. I think this is because of where I blended over the top of it. It did wipe away some of the coverage. This is a particularly difficult thing to cover and I'd rather have this a little bit more visible than it being a really greasy, heavy situation going on. My hardest area to cover is my chin and I think it's looking really nice there. It's not accentuated any dryness at all. So yeah. I'm going to get on with the rest of my day. I will see you in a moment for my final thoughts and I'll just let you know how it's worn throughout the day and we'll have a look, see how things are looking and whether indeed my eyebrows have slid off my face. Hi everyone, so it's nearing the end of my day. It's been a beautiful day. So I'm actually filming this final check-in a lot later than I had intended to. I'm literally about to remove my makeup and I've been hunting around the house trying to find some decent lighting. Excuse the life behind me, but yeah, we've been out enjoying the sunshine and I wanted to sit down and, and give you my final thoughts. I've taken lots and lots of pictures of how this is wearing right now because of the fact that the sun keeps going in and out behind clouds. So I will insert some pictures as I'm talking just so that you can see exactly how things are going. But I've actually been wearing this for nearly nine hours now, which is quite a long time for me. I had to blot my face earlier because I was excessively oily and that's one of the things that I was really worried about because it did feel like a very greasy foundation, even though I powdered my face. When I blotted, the foundation really came off on the sheets as well. So because of that, I think the foundation has actually worn off quite badly in a few places. In particular, we can see this guy again. I've also got some friends down here which are now showing through a lot more. It's worn off on my chin area quite badly. But it hasn't really clung to dry patches at all. So I think if you have dry skin and your skin was prepared quite nicely, then this would be a nice one to go for. If you had oily skin like me, then again, I think you need to make sure it's properly prepared with a really good mattifying primer because it is quite a naturally greasy and oily, slippery feeling foundation, which is unlike anything I have ever touched before. Even though it says it would dry to a velvet matte finish, compared to other foundations, more up-to-date ones in comparison to this one obviously being around a long time, when they refer to matte, we truly know what matte means, whereas I don't know whether matte meant something different back then. It was initially kind of a matte-ish finish, but it still had a glow to it as well. So yeah, not quite sure about the finish of this one. It's worn off quite a bit under my eyes as well. I feel like my panda eyes, my kind of eye bags are starting to show through and I'm looking pretty haggard, to be honest. I've also had a random patch of my brows start to wear off as well, and I don't think I've rubbed my brows at all, so that was another thing that I was a little bit concerned of because of it feeling so slippery. If you had normal skin and you didn't have too much that needed to be covered up, you just wanted to even everything out, and you just buffed a really light layer into the skin, I think this could actually be a really beautiful foundation for you and it would last you such a long time and it's affordable because it does actually give a really nice natural level of coverage even though it's serious, serious extreme coverage. When I saw my husband today and he saw my face for the first time since I'd applied makeup, I said to him, you know, how's it looking? He really scrutinised my face and he said he felt like it was a good colour match that it had evened out things really nicely and it looked really natural. And I would agree with him there. I think he's usually quite critical when I ask him these things because he knows how it is that I like my foundation to look. He did criticise that I'd not blended a few areas particularly well, but hey ho, that kind of thing happens, I'm only human. I definitely want to experiment with this one in the future. I'd be intrigued to see how it wears with a really good mattifying primer underneath. I think I'd like to mix it with a mattifying foundation to see if I can amp up the coverage of the foundation whilst also mattifying it a little bit more. I think at the end of the day, this is a foundation that's definitely worthy of further experimentation. And I am looking forward to trying it in a few different ways and just seeing how it goes because that initial, say, three or four hours, it looked really nice. And when I took the flash photo test, I was actually really pleased with how it was looking. And I kept looking in the mirror and thinking, I actually really like this, it looks lovely. It was just really, 
the last portion of the day when things started to go a little bit downhill. If you've got oily skin, it needs to either be really well prepared or you're just gonna have to be prepared to blot and kind of touch it up maybe throughout the day. Like I said, I will need to experiment a little bit more with this one in terms of that, and I'll let you know how I get on in another video. But all in all, I think it's still looking pretty passable. I've had foundations that I've worn for a similar amount of time that have definitely looked worse than this, that I've worn off really horribly, that have clung to dry patches, which this one certainly hasn't. So I think for the price, and the kind of coverage that you're getting, it's lovely. So if you had an event that you needed to go to where you were only wearing makeup for a very short amount of time, say maybe in the evening, and you're wanting to go for a really glamorous, beautiful finish, then this foundation could be the one for you. If you're wanting to get a full day's wear out of it, then you're gonna to have to experiment with different combos of a decent primer if you've got dry or oily skin, and then perhaps a really good setting powder if you've got oily skin. So there we have it. I really hope that this review was helpful if this is a foundation that you're considering getting. If it indeed was helpful, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up down below because it does really help support my channel. And if you are new here and would like to see more content like this from me in the future, I will pop a button just here so you can click it and just get notified of new content as and when it gets uploaded. And if you've not seen my last video, I will also pop a link to that one just up here so you can click it and check that one out too. Anyway, I hope you're all really well and I will see you again soon. Bye!